What's going on everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of the Apple TV Plus original series, The After Party Season 2. This will follow Episode 8, which is titled Fang, and is directed by Eric Capel. So, at this point, I've said it a billion times before, at least in the last seven episodes, this, con this season continues to astound me on how good it is. I can't believe that a season uh, can continue to be just as amazing and awesome. I mean, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of patience, it takes a lot of just drive to make a series like this. And to make it so engaging and so confusing, but also so straightforward, it's a se it's a series where like it leaves so many things out in the open for you, but it also continues to kind of uh, like swerve you, I guess you could say. And that's what this episode does too. It like takes everything you've already learned throughout this entire season about these characters and how their drives and motives, and maybe why they didn't do it, maybe they, why why they didn't kill Edgar. And it's just an incredible thing to see. It really is. And this episode is no different. This is an episode that follows. Kang John, who does a fantastic Emmy Award winning job, or at least Emmy Award nomination job, uh, who plays Fang, uh, the father of Grace and Zoe, and gives you a lot of heart to why his motivations are the way they are. This is a character that is flawed. He really is. He's a character that gets truly upset. But he has reasons to get upset. He's upset at his brother, who, of course, committed adultery with his own wife. And on top of everything, he's trying to put this business into effect, this shaved ice business, which he goes into detail, which is really funny. I really like the idea of, like, it's shaved ice, but it melts because it has, like, milk in it and it has all this fruit in it. It's very, it very much feels like a sexual innuendo type discussion or uh, thing to kind of tell people about. But he's there for his daughter's wedding, but he also has an ulterior motive, which is to get this business off the ground and that's why he brings kyler along he brings him not only to take care of the wedding but he brings him along to make videos of his of his shaved ice which is going to be the dessert for the party and the process of everything we learned that he basically was an individual that owes money to whatever court company or whatever you know gave him money probably the bank or something like that and he owes a lot of money and he's desperate to get Edgar to invest in his like idea and Edgar being kind of not a very good individual. I mean, he, he kind of goes back and forth on his like kind of uh, ulterior motives and his ideas and kind of wants. And he, he makes a decision that he'll try it, the, try the shaved ice, the, the stuff that um, Fang makes. But there's no guarantees, and as long as Roxanne, his lizard, likes it, you know, all that good stuff. But I, I just really kind of, I kind of love the fact that, you know, Ulysses is an individual that played off like he really was desperate to be with Vivian, but he made a mistake, and he went off and did his own thing, and he's trying to keep himself in check and stuff like that, and... We also find out that Fang was in the process of trying to be there for his daughter, be there for his wife, be there for his family. Also try to, you know, run the scheme of the, the investment stuff, which he hasn't told his family about. And every time he does something, and we've seen this throughout the entire season, where, like, Ulysses, like, uh, stepped in to do the dance with uh, Grace. The whole idea of, like, the, you know, him being around his, his nieces and stuff like that. The idea of, like... You know, he's trying to do this investment thing with Edgar, and then Ulysses kind of interrupts with this with this device, this Nagoni. I think it's Nagoni or Nagani or something like that. I, I, you can correct me. I, I appreciate it, but it's this like uh, is, is, is this kind of it looks like a guitar or ukulele, but it's um, a very kind of put together cool thing that makes Edgar feel something. I guess I don't know. But this is all. This episode is all about the problems and the the tribulations of a father who cares about his daughters, who also cares about his family. And the struggles of trying to trying to protect them from the real truth that he's struggling, that he is desperate. He needs this company. Like during the during the reception or whatever, when he walks out, he's not walking out because he's upset at Ulysses. He's walking out because his truck is being towed. And it, it's just it's really kind of it's really kind of sad to be fairly honest because this guy is such an entrepreneur. He cares so much about trying to take care of his his family and stuff like that that it becomes like kind of. A, a quest it makes him look bad because every time he's on video he just he seems like he's angry he's yelling at the 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 cocktail reception and stuff like that because they're not making the shaved ice very well he's mad at you know ulysses he's mad at you know edgar he's mad at everyone and it comes off like he's the one who killed it, it killed uh, you know edgar's character and you know watch edgar kind of like sh like spit in his face a little bit because he's like i don't like this ice shaved ice and stuff like that and roxanne that's just funny they gave roxanne the, the little gecko the lizard just gave him the gave the lizard some shave ice. It was, it's just it, it really is funny. There's some funny stuff with the the TikToking and stuff like that. The videos. I love the idea of like Kyler 
is in the middle of doing a live stream. Uh, and he, he gets on the, he does the skateboarding. He's on the uh, bars and he kind of hits his ball. <laughs> he kind of hits himself in the nuts. And then they call, like, uh, Zoe and the rest of the crew to get the video footage, call him in the middle of his live stream. And then, of course, Travis sp spits out that there's a murder. So it becomes one big kind of chaotic moment. But it's just funny that he's in the middle of a live stream and, you know, Fang's always talking him up about how good he is at skateboarding, but he hits himself in the nuts and stuff like that. It's, it's really funny. But, but back to my point is Kyler is showing all these clips, but they always, they kind of make, they make, uh, Fang look bad. And it's just, it's really sad because it, it's a way to kind of make the audience turn against him because he's always been that guy. It's kind of been in the background, kind of like Isabel who actually gets the next episode which is gonna be interesting but that that's just this whole episode it really is not much more than that it's basically an episode where you know fang has to come to the realization that you know his plans are going to be he has to do something he has to get desperate and you know when anique approaches him is like we need to use this footage you know it is evidence fang gets really upset and he goes off in this field which i've never seen ken jong do before which is a really a passionate speech about how much Vivian means to him. Like the whole you think with Ulysses was such a was such a heartbreaking thing, and it's true because Ulysses was cheating on, you know, cheating with uh, Vivian's character. But he explains how Vivian really was the driving force behind this. That she really cares, and she says the same thing to, of course, uh, when uh, uh, Vivian takes Zoe and Grace into the room. She says the same thing. She's like, he is my everything. And he says it the same thing. It's the watch his kind of his eyes and how watery they get and how red they are. There's something in passion about that. So it doesn't mean he is not guilty. It just means that there's something, there's a true love behind there. And then, of course, uh, Grace admits that she's in love with Hannah, which is really funny because uh, Vivian says something about the tent. You know, you love the woman in the tent. And there's the idea of like Zoe that kind of officially realizes that she's in love with, of course, Anik. Uh, I actually thought that Anik, when he approached Vivian in this episode, that he was going to ask uh, Vivian if he could have her hand in marriage. But he's like, you just need to tell him. It's, Anik is one of those characters that is really kind of our surrogate for this series because we're learning everything like he does. I mean, you can say Danner is, but it's more Anik. And when he kind of gets, you know, the fire under himself, he's like us. He's like, he goes and tells people what they need to know and what they should do. And for better or worse, it happens or it doesn't happen. And it's just like, I think that's really interesting to have Anik just be that character. I'm interested to see if he's even, if they're going to bring these characters like Zoe or Anik back for the third season, or they're going to bring back uh, Danner for the third season, because if they do a third season, because it would be really interesting to see how they can use these characters in effect, or maybe they'll just use Danner. We'll see what happens. But because we're getting close to the end of the season, things start to need to wrap up. So we, we start to see kind of, I, I did really, the thing I really like is we get the genre episodes. So we get... From the character's point of view and their like particular kind of uh, eccentricities, I guess you could say, like with Travis and Hannah and so on and so forth, Sebastian. But what makes this episode so interesting is we see the we see those kind of story arcs play out. So we see Travis tip or uh, giving the guy the the receptionist guy money, the guy who's cocktail receptionist. We see, of course, the stuff from Hannah's point of view when she's staring at Grace. We see, of course, Sebastian, all that stuff when he tries to, I love when everybody tries the ice, it's everybody but uh, Sebastian, and he's like, no, 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 give me back the shaved ice, and it goes very successful for everyone, including Fang. So we get all the connecting pieces starting to flow together, so if you forgot about what happened in the first episode, we're starting to get some of that stuff back into the mix, so we can kind of get, kind of start putting the puzzle pieces or the chessboard back together as it was kind of fractured and stuff like that, and that's kind of what this episode does because the next episode is the penultimate episode so we're going to get a lot of you know we're probably going to get another genre episode or we're going to get something but we're going to get a lot of information that won't be the whole total re revelation because what they'll probably do at the end of the next episode in episode nine is go yes uh this was a killer and then we won't find out until episode 10 but that's why i said you know there's a point where uh kyler is filming uh isabelle's character and she's staring out the window, as we see in the episode. But there's a picture behind her of, of her husband who's staring down at her, which I thought was very interesting. And it's also interesting that when Anik goes and sees Isabel, she asks if he wants a suit of armor. 
Okay, why would he want the suit of armor? What is she, what is in that suit of armor that she's trying to hide? There's also a painting in the back of her, or back of him, or back of her, of somebody staring at a book. So I, and that may be just a painting. It's just something I noticed. Like you start noticing things as you, as they tell you that there's more and more stuff in the, each episode that you'll notice, or you just pay attention. It might help you out. I mean, you could look at the opening credits and see like the different things that are playing out and see how maybe there's like pieces of puzzles being thrown out there, but it still leaves open like who actually killed Edgar. And it leads to the end of this episode where video clip that they show, which is the actual reception after the, the wedding and stuff like that, where we basically see Edgar and Isabel talking to, me, to each other. And Isabel says, I know what you're doing, Edgar. Edgar's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Edgar sees, um, of course, Kyler, who's bringing him that shaved ice to have him try out. And Edgar's really upset. He gets really upset. He's like, you need to go. So it brings up, like, what exactly did Edgar do that maybe upset someone? Or did he die? Or is he dead? Once again, there's a possibility that he's not dead. But there's got to be something that Isabel, because Isabel, you know, she's like, I know what you're doing. So... That leaves up a billion possibilities. Does she know about him scamming people? Does she know about like his plans to vacate and disappear like Travis was talking about? The, what does she know? And it leads to them going to meet Isabel. Everybody in the entire second season, like outside of Edgar, who's dead, comes into the room. And Isabel's like, yeah, I knew you were going to come to me eventually. And she's like, yeah, I knew who killed Edgar. And uh, it wasn't Grace. And... You know, and Grace goes, what the? <laughs> it's just really, fu it's really funny how Grace responds as it cuts to the credits. But it, once again, we have two episodes to go. So even though she says, I know who killed Edgar, it's not going to be revealed to like the end of the end of the 10th episode. So don't think the ninth episode is going to give us everything. But it's going to be really interesting to see now that we see Elizabeth Perkins character and she hasn't been really in the season outside of a few bits and bobs. So we're going to get a lot of stuff thrown at us that's going to be kind of uh, instrumental to like what exactly happened to Edgar. Why did he get to the place he's at? We're probably going to learn about his past a little bit. We're probably going to learn about like her husband. I mean, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's kind of clear up the whole situation. But once again, you know, it's one of those things where we have to wait till episode 10, like the last season where we'll, we find out what really happened. And once again, I'm still leaning towards that he's not actually dead or that he decided that he was scamming and it caught up to him and uh, somebody killed him. Maybe it was somebody in the crowd. Like there's a scene where, you know, Fang is teaching the one of, I think, Sebastian's brothers or cousins or whatever to make the shaved ice and he disappears and like i said we see what happens in the episode but he comes back and you know it could be one of the cousins or the brothers or whatever of sebastian or it could be somebody in the background it could be kyler for all we know and i'm really interested to see like where what they are going to do to wrap up the story and here like i said we're now on episode eight so we're getting closer and closer we now have a lot of pieces put together where we see kind of the alibis of the story the only thing that is problematic is just the fact that fang was so reliant on these video clips to has, like keep him from being the suspect but in the end i mean it's probably a swerve it really is so we'll see what happens i i don't know it's it's really gonna be fascinating to see how it plays out I, like i said there's other stuff like with the the m ms that is really funny when kyler has to sleep with the aunt so like that i mean it could be the aunt for all we know is the one that killed uh egger because she got really mad at what he was doing so i don't know but yeah it's wild this episode is wild and it was fantastic and it's another uh i'll give it a 10 <laughs> like last episode it's just the other half of the family is much better than the other half of the family i, I don't get it but it's yeah 10 out of 10 it's a really especially that ending which is like yeah it's really cool so can't wait we'll be on the penultimate episode next week and uh yeah that'll be it that we might take on uh the after party season two episode eight which is called fang uh so there you go uh with that said uh as i always say let me know in the comments below what do you think of the episode what is your feeling now like i know we probably don't think it's fang but who could it be? I mean, what do you think after seeing all these pieces? Is there stuff that I missed? Let me know. Of course, we have that pot, the knitted, you know, crochet thing that we still haven't talked about, which I'm sure will be come up in a couple episodes. But yeah, there you go. That's my take. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I said, uh, if you like what you see on this video, awesome. Hit the subscribe button, the join movie emporium. Hit that notification bell on top to find us coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.